how's it going? Welcome to Ham Radio with K Zero P I R, my YouTube channel. I've been working with my iMac. It's a used one I picked up a few years ago, and I really like it. I'm running MacLogger DX and FL Digi today. Uh, it works really good together. There's been a, a few issues with this, and I'll show you how easy it is to get it set up. Okay, the issues are with push to talk and with logging from FL Digi into MacLogger DX. And that has always seemed to be a, a problem or problematic for people. I'll show you how to do this an easy way. The first thing you want to do is set up MacLogger DX. And then the second thing you want to do is set up FL Digi. We're going to set it up for UDP. So FL Digi reads MacLogger DX. If you look at the frequency, FL Digi has the same frequency as MacLogger DX. And if I adjust my tuning dial on my radio, MacLogger DX follows it and FL Digi does too. Let me get back on frequency there. Now if we change frequency in MacLogger DX, I'll highlight that and we'll just go up one. You'll see that FL Digi eventually follows and of course my radio changes over immediately. I'm using the ICOM 7610. So I'll, I'll go back down and you'll see that FL Digi follows. Now if we change it in FL Digi, it does not change MacLogger DX and it does not change the tuning dial on the radio. So it, FL Digi follows MacLogger DX, but MacLogger DX and the radio does not follow FL Digi. So let me show you how that is set up. So we're going to go into MacLogger DX first, and we're going to go to Preferences. And there's just one thing you need to check off in here, and that is UDP Broadcast. Check that off, and then I've got WSJTX because I've been using that. So we can close that up and then in FL Digi you want to go to configure I'm using version 4.1.12 configure dialog and we're gonna go to logging over here and then to Mac logger and we want to connect to Mac logger and right now I'm capturing the radio report and I want to capture the lookup too so I'm going to, and you'll see, notice the power on here. The power is, uh, well, 31.5. I'll show you how I have the power set up. So with these ICOM radios, it will read the power off of the radio. But I'm going to go ahead and click save here and then close it. I should have done this a second ago. Let's go back into MacLogger DX preferences and then over to the radio. And you'll notice down here, report power, and then the multiplier. And it'll do it with this radio. I've got the mul multiplier set to dot .788. And that gives me about the correct output. So if I change the output power on the radio, let me clear this. Okay, so if I change the power on the radio, I hit the multi-knob on my radio and I adjust the RF power on it. See, I'm at 31 and a half right now. Normally, I just uh, I use about 30 watts on PSK31. So I just adjusted the power on the radio and it gives me the correct power output. Now when I hit tune over here, I can look at the radio and yep that's 30 watts you can't see the front of the radio but that's 30 watts output i'm looking at my watt meter 30 watts out so it's got the correct that was the correct multiplier in there okay so now your radio set up to uh MacLogger dx is following your radio it's controlling the radio MacLogger dx has rig control fl digi is following everything or following MacLogger DX. So that part is set. The second part is going to be logging. 
How do we get FL Digi to log to MacLogger DX? Let me show you how I do that. That's coming up in part two. Okay, so the second part of this is going to get FL Digi logging into MacLogger DX, and there's a script for it. So going, I'm going to go into my Finder window, and I have my Extras folder from my MacLogger DX installation. I have it under Applications. So I'm going to double click on it and then I'm going to go to Apple Scripts and then FL Digi. And there's a few different ways to do this, but I use this auto log. It's the auto log to FL Digi, auto log FL Digi to MLDX. And there's a PDF here. You can open it up and follow the instructions. I only have one problem with it. And the problem was with my launch agents. I don't have one in my user directory. It's under the system. I'll get to that in a minute. But the first thing we want to do is these two files, we want to copy them to our desktop. So I'm going to select them and hold down the option key and then drag them to the desktop. Now you want to make sure you copy them. Don't put a, a shortcut copy them and paste them to the desktop or use the option key and drag them over to your desktop and that makes a copy of them and uh, the first thing we want to do is put this auto log script into a scripts folder and i already have one here it is this folder so you'll want to create one under your your home directory and to get to your home directory you can just click go and then home and then in your home directory just go ahead and this tells you command shift n for a new folder and name it scripts and i've already got one in there it's a capital s i'm going to go ahead and put this one in the trash i don't need it capital S and I've already got the auto log in there but to copy it and put it in there I hold down the option key and just drag it in there and I'm just going to stop so that's it for the auto log I can put that one in the trash the next thing we want to do is we want to edit this PL list and you can follow the instructions and do it with the instructions Okay, and we'll open up this file, and this one you'll want to change two entries in it. It'll have username in there in capital letters, and you'll want to change it to your username. And mine is Richard Donahue. Then you want to go up to File and Save, and we can close it up. So the next part we want to uh, open up a terminal window and mine is under applications and utilities and then terminal double click on it and it opens up and I want to change to the desktop you can copy and paste that the CD desktop copy and paste it over there I've already done it so it's in the memory and now I'm on my desktop. The next thing I want to do is copy uh, the the uh, com dot auto log dot pl list or p list to launch agents. And like I said, I don't have a launch agents. This little tilde indicates the home directory. And if I go to my home directory and uh, then the library. I don't have launch agents. If you have a launch agents in there, then go ahead and use this command just as it is. But if you don't, and yours is under your your system, like there's my hard drive, and here's my library. I have a launch agents under this one. There it is. I'll have to remove that tilde right there. So check that first, see where your launch agents is, that directory. Go back. 
and I've got my okay, my terminal windows open. I'm still on my desktop. I want to uh, use this command here. I just got to take the tilde out for me. Let me see where mine is. There it is. Okay. I took the tilde out. I can stretch this out so you can get the whole command in there. Gonna ask me for my password. So it copied it over into there. So it put that that file into launch agents. And the next thing you want to do is to run this command. And now my FL Digi that is under my username. And I'll show you if I go to my username or go to my home directory, I can go to my home directory over here. And I can see the hidden directories. There's FL Digi, FL Digi right there. If you need to see your hidden directories, hold down the shift command and then press the period on your keyboard and then you'll be able to see your hidden directories so I've got this this command will work for me so I'll just go back over to my terminal window and uh, let's see do that and I don't have one in there so it, it doesn't exist that's okay the next command we want to run is this one at the very bottom and I do have to remove that tilde out. And there it is. So just copy and paste that over. And uh, it's already loaded. So I don't have to worry about it. The next thing to do is test it. Let's see if, uh, let's see if FL Digi will log into it. Okay, to test it, we want to open up uh, FL Digi. And before we put a call sign in there and log it to see if it uh, logs down here, I've got my log detached from MacLogger DX. But before we do that, we want to go into the preferences and the lookup. And if you have uh, upload QSOs in real time, you'll want to take all of those check marks off. And uh, let's that one, I don't have one in there. Next one is HRD. I'll take that off. Club log. Take that off. EQSL. LOTW. Finally, Twitter. So I can close that out and uh, let's test it. Let's just put a call sign in there. Uh, put a friends friends in there. KU9S. And if it uh, doesn't show up under there, I just hit this globe and it fills in the information. So that's Jerry. And I have a QSO with him. Then I want to hit the log to save it. We're going to watch down here and make sure that it gets logged. And there you go, pops in there right away. That's a quick one. Okay, the third and final part is getting push to talk to work. And I started editing my video and realized that I had my video camera up in the top left hand corner. Uh, push to talk, let's go to the extras folder and uh, Apple scripts, FL Digi. And we've got some push to talks in here, a couple of them, one, two, three. This is the one I use. It is K7UF. We'll double click on it and we'll open it up. We're going to make this an application and to simply uh, make it an application, all you have to do is go over to the script editor and file and export. Oh, see? My video's blocking that. Okay, script editor, file, and export. And I'm just going to leave the name there, or you can change it. Let's uh, give it a different name so I can save it. 
and it's going to go in applications and we're going to change the format to application and then change anything else in there click save and that's it so if we go back to applications we will see the script in here somewhere there it is IFLDG push to talk now you can start this manually or you can start it with FL Digi and I'll show you how I started it with FL Digi. Let me change. Okay, uh, you're looking at MacLogger DX and I'm going to open up FL Digi and it will open up automatically and I'll show you how to set the auto start. I'm going to open up FL Digi. I'm using two screens so you can't see it because I don't have the toolbar down here. Oh, there it is. It opened up automatically. And that's the one that I had named differently. But if you want it to open up automatically, just go to configure, config dialog, and under miscellaneous auto start, and put the path in there, and then enable it. And it will start up automatically. And then when you close FL Digi, it will close automatically. And sometimes I get an error. I don't worry about it. I just close the error. A uh, little error message. And uh, uh, it hadn't been a problem. So to check push to talk, let's move over here to a free place in the waterfall. I'm going to hit the tune button. And you'll see it's, it's very quick. Perfect. And now when I send CQ, when I'm using my macros up here, I can send a, a CQ. It starts up right away. I haven't had any problems with it. So that'll do it. If you have any questions or comments, please make them below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Also tell your friends. 73 and good DX.